So hello to all my dear aspirants. Welcome you all to Sail to MDS Dental Academy. So aspirants, today we are going with the image based question, which forms an integral part of your NEET, MDS, and INICET exam. Lot of image based videos are uploaded. You can click on the link given in the description box. But on operative and doing radio, we are coming with the part two. Remember. All these questions are from the standard reference book for your NEET exams. Okay, Spiran, and remember when we have conducted the lecture, a lot of image-based questions have been discussed. But these are few extra images which need to be discussed. So let us start with the first image, that is the tooth slot. So this is the tooth slot, Spiran, most often used for the diagnosis of cracked tooth syndrome. It is the ideal diagnostic tool. Remember the. People, those having a cracked tooth syndrome, they have a unique pain response, which is known as a rebound or relief pain. It means what? They have the pain when they release the pressure of biting. Okay, so there are other tools like you can go for the percussion of teeth. You can go for the careful probing with an explorer. You can see here the crack is there, aspirant. Then you can go for the biting on tooth slot. You can go for the biting on cotton applicator or rubber wheel. Then a careful isolation can be done with rubber dam. So the proper magnification can be used to visualize them. Even you can use the macro photographs. You can see the crack here. Even fiber optic translimination can also be used for diagnosis of cracked tooth. Let's see the another image. So the question is there following endodontic treatment, the patient develops severe pain and ecchymosis as seen in color plate. So what can be the cause? It is sodium hypochlorite accident. Remember, Aspirin, what is sodium hypochlorite accident? Whenever there is an inadvertent exposure of sodium hypochlorite beyond the peri apex, the accident occur. You know, the sodium hypochlorite is a hypertonic in nature. So when it goes beyond the apex, it will open up all your blood vessel and minor capillaries. And because of that, the blood is seen in the pulpal space. That's why whenever it happens, you have to go for the sodium hypochlorite irrigation stoppage. Then you irrigate with normal saline or sterile water, which help in making the atmosphere hypotonic to hypotonic. Then you can go for the dress the uh, root canal with a non setting calcium and you can go for the temporary seal. Remember, whenever such mischief occurs, you have to give the patient local anesthesia, mainly BUP, Vakin, which is long acting in nature. Analgesic should be given to patient. You can go for cold compress for analgesia and hot compress to improve local circulation. Antibiotics can also be given here to follow up patient properly and if the mishap is very severe, you have to refer them to the oral and maxillofacial unit. So this is the classical achemiasis picture for your sodium hypochlorite accident. Let us see the four different kind of resorption, the condition present in the radiograph. This is the case of external resorption aspirant. Okay, here you can see internal resorption which is also known as pink tooth of mummery. This is the case of apical resorption. Don't get confused aspirant. Okay, this is the case of the apical resorption of root. And here you can see the arrow has been shown. This is the cervical resorption case. Now, often we know this is the rubber dam clamp, but we get confused with the small, small parts given here. So remember aspirant, this one is known as clamp wing, okay, with the lingual and blocker. This 1.1 area, this area is the central arm and this is the anterior arm. This third one, this UK, this is the clamp bix. And this pointed area you can know is the contact point which contact your tooth surface. Then this one is your clamp holes. This is, is your clamp notch and this one is your clamp bow. So please just remember the parts of our M clamp. Let's see the another case report. A patient came to the hospital with a severe swelling and redness on all affected areas. You can see the cellulite is here respirant. So probably which space it occur, most probably uh, the infection is there. So it is the buccal space. Now let us try to classify the facial spaces. Most often given different in different book. This is from the Peterson. You have to remember this aspirant. So primary mandibular space are sublingual, buccal, submandibular, and submental. 
and primary maxillary space are canine, buccal, and infratemporal. Remember, the buccal space is being divided both in the maxillary and mandibular spaces. Then we have secondary facial space like mesentery, telegomandibular, superficial and deep temporal, lateral pharyngeal, retropharyngeal, and prevertebral spaces. Now you have to identify the equipment shown in the color print. So this is the articulating paper forcer. This you can see, this is the locking force of You can see how to see at this two area. This one is your stiglitz plier used for holding silver point. And this is your tissue holding forceps. Then identify the component of x-ray tube marked with the arrow. Remember aspirin, this is your anode and this is your cathode. So don't get confused when out of this any picture is there in your exam. Remember this one is your anode and this is your cathode. Then this is a very important uh, diagram in which you can visualize the importance of our oral region. So aspirin, this one is your dentigerous cyst. This small one you can see between the tooth is your periodontal cyst. This one is your nasopalatine duct cyst. And this one is your residual cyst. Fine aspirin, this is your OKC that is odontogenic keratocyst tumor. This one is your simple bone cyst. This ninth one is your periapical cyst. And this sixth one is your infected mandibular cyst. And this one is your Stephanie bone cyst. So now aspirin, this is the radiograph with mixed radiolucency that is radio opacity as well as radio lucency. So most often it indicates the periapical cemented dysplasia. Remember it is associated with the vital teeth biases and all the other options that is abscess, cyst and granuloma is seen with the non-vital teeth. Then experience we are going to see this is the skull view indicate which are diagnosis. So you can see two important things here prominent cranial markings and this is the beaten metal or a copper beaten appearance. So this indicate the Krausen syndrome. Remember it is also seen there is a prominent cranial markings we are noted which are also seen in normal growing patient but are more prominent because of increase in intracranial pressure from growing brain. And this marking may be seen as multiple retinocency as a depression of the inner surface of cranial wall which result in the copper beaten appearance. So this is the Krausen syndrome with two definitive diagnostic feature markings and this multiple radio retinocencies. Then aspirin, we are going to focus on the classification of the current night eye physicist given by the American Academy of Endologists. So when you see this classification, two things are important. You have to know the feature of every generation and second, the cross-sectional design. So let us see the first generation. They have a constant taper, they have a radial lens, a neutral or negative rate angle. So let us see different files. So profile, it belongs to first generation. They have a triple U-shape with radial lens and they have a neutral rate angle. That planes dentinal walls. GT files, they also have a triple U-shape with radial lens. Remember they have a short cutting portion and their peach is variable. Very in profile, there was a constant peach. Then light speed instrument, they have a triple U-shape with radial lens. And remember, they have a specific instrument sequence producing a taper shape. And they have a thin, flexible, non-cutting set, short cutting head. Then second generation, they have an active cutting blade without a radial lens. Let us see the importance, very important file, pro taper, we have everybody use. They have a convex triangular shape or a sharp cutting edge we can see here with no radial lens. Remember aspirin in pro taper we have two files, shaping and finishing. Shaping file have a partially active tips and finishing file have a non-cutting tips. Okay, then K3 syndrome and known they have positive rake angle for cutting, they have three radial lens you can see aspirin and peripheral blade relief for reduce friction. Then we have flex master VDW, they have a convex triangular shape with a sharp cutting edge and no radial lens. Then you can see the another instrument system from the second generation, there is a race, they have a triangular shape, contact, they have an S shape design with a double helical flute, 
positive rectangle and two wide radial lines. You can see these are the two wide radial lines. And then they are both tip design cutting as well as long cutting. Then M2, they have an S shaped design with two cutting edges and no radial lines. They are minimum core width. So when the core width reduces, the flexibility of the instrument increases. And they also have a non cutting tip design. Let us see third generation. Remember, in third generation, we have the pre treated files like the M wire and R phase alloy, like Pro Taper. Here, the shape is same, but the change here is that it is a heat treated night eye alloy. This state file of single end road triangular shape, no radial lens. High flex CM by coating, they have a triangular cross section design. And high flex CM is made from the heat treated control memory night eye alloys. Fourth generation, they are the night eye instruments with reciprocal motion. So, the example V1 and reciprocal. In remember, aspirant, they can ask single base question which of the following five belong to third generation, fourth generation? So, you should know the example also. So, V1 have a modified convex triangle and reciprocal have a S shaped cross section. Here, the allow user of M wire technology. Then, we will go for fifth generation, Protaper next, they have a rectangular cross section. In fifth generation, the cross section are very asymmetric. Like in one shape, we have variable cross section, three cutting edge transition to two cutting edges coronally. In true anatomy, we have off centered cross section. So, let us see these different phases which I talk about. That is the R phase, M wire technology, and control memory wires. Remember, as the control memory wires are subjected to an austeric finish temperature of 55 degrees Celsius. The example are high flex rotary instrument. MY technology, they have three phases that is the micro twin, pre martin stick, and austenitic. Okay, the example are pro taper next and twisted files. In R phase, it is an intermediate phase with a rhomboidal structure. R stands for rhomboidal. So it is formed in the forward transformation from M to A, that is martin side to austenite on heating, and reverse transformation from A to M on. So please know these different advances in your night eye alloys. So as friend, that was all from the today's video. You can contact me if any doubt is there regarding preparation, the number, website, email, everything is there. Till then, experience, keep on working. This is the initial phase of a preparation which need to be fastened to get through the work. Be particular in, and disciplined with your work, go with the timetable and properly fill your assessment form. Till then, take care.